Hello, have you ever searched for bankroll management, scrolled down the results, trying to find this ideal chart that tells you exactly how many buy-ins you need for the stake you wish to play? If so, I'm happy to see that you value bankroll management, but I'm also here to tell you that it is more important and complex than you think it is. You need to take into account what kind of player you are, what your current level is, what your goals are with poker, and most importantly, what type of person you are. Since a chart can possibly take this into account, in this video my goal is to tell you about the complexity of bankroll management for each player type and for the current stage of your career, so at the end of the video you will know what to do. Let's first start with a recreational player, because for if you are a recreational player, you do not need to follow these charts, because let's say you want to play fast fold poker, at this side you see blitz poker only runs at 10 NL, 50 NL and 200 NL, so if you follow this chart, they would probably tell you you need 50 buy-ins or 100 buy-ins for a stake. So if you wanted to play 10 NL, you'd be thinking you need $500 or $1,000 to play a game of $10. Of course not. What is important for you to realize is that if you play poker for fun, haven't studied it much, you are most likely a losing player. You play poker because you have fun playing it and because you have a chance of winning it but not because you're expecting to win. Therefore, you need to treat it as something you're going to buy. If you want to buy a car, you need to know whether you can afford it. If you want to go to a restaurant for two people, the bill is $100, you need to beforehand decide whether you want to spend this or not. And more important than to understand professional's bankroll strategy, you need to understand what to expect for the money you deposit. So if you deposit $100 and you play 100 NL, it is perfectly possible that after five minutes you've lost your money. If you deposit $1,000 but play 2NL, even if you are very, very bad, you will enjoy it for a month or two for a very long time. Okay, so just try to figure out what stakes is the ideal, whether you want to play for a day and then at the end of the day I've won or I've lost, or whether you want to deposit something to keep it aside and enjoy it as much as possible. So if you're a recreational player, pay attention to the bankroll strategies for the micro stakes grinder just so you get an idea of the variance of the game to understand what to expect in return. But the most important as said is, can you afford this? Are you having fun for the amount of money you are depositing? Now the micro stakes player. You are of course not a professional yet. You are starting 2NL, 5NL, 10NL and you're deciding your strategy. In the micro stakes, it's roughly possible to differentiate between two people. The ones who play it for fun but take the game serious because they really enjoy the game and they want to beat it, but not because their long-term goal is to make money, but because they really enjoy the game and want the satisfaction of being able to be good at it. And then there's the micro stakes grinders who are just looking to make money as fast as possible and move up in stakes. The second type, you need to understand at this stage of a career, improving is more important because you will make serious money once you're good enough and move up. The first type who plays it because of the goal to beat it, but not because they want to make money, you can treat it similar to a recreational player. Key here is to understand whether you already beat the game or not. If you don't beat it, then at some point eventually you lose, so you'll have to deposit again. So make sure you only deposit always what you are able to afford to lose. If you already beat the game, I would say with this intention, keeping 50 buy-ins is very much enough to enjoy the game. You rarely have to deposit again, only with a bad downswing. So I'd say 40, 50 buy-ins, great. You, you will be able to enjoy the games without all the time thinking about depositing and withdrawing. For the micro stakes grinder who has the goal of making money as soon as possible, my approach usually is different than other people suggest. I don't think you need to desperately short take and try to see whether you be 10 NL already or whether you are only good enough for 5 NL. Don't worry about this. Your serious money is going to come in the long term and it doesn't matter whether in this month you win $100 more or less if in six months you can be winning more than a thousand. So bankroll management here, 50 buy-ins can't take all the negative variants. You need to be aware if your win rate is low, it is possible to have 30, 40, 50 buy-ins downswing. So let's say all you have is $500. There's no point in playing 10 NL, constantly being worried about losing 20 buy-ins or not, whether you don't know. More important is invest the money in education. Play 2 NL if that's necessary. 
play two NL, you if you have if you are beating five NL, you will be two NL by an even larger margin. Take away one hundred dollars, maybe two hundred dollars, to to invest in studying tools like GTO Wizard. You can find my link in the description for ten percent off. Maybe a coach. My point is, if you have five hundred dollars and barely beat ten NL, the return of playing a lower stake and investing to improve is much higher than trying to grind your life out at 10NL because well if you are at a downswing you'll need to move down again. If you're in an upswing you will still not be good enough to beat 25NL. So if you prioritize investing the money in the studying tool and I understand that some options are expensive and some options aren't even good. I understand this. I was at this stage myself at some point. But if your goal really is to make as much money as possible, the better EV decision is play the lower stake and invest the money you can afford to invest to improve. And then much sooner when instead of playing 10 NL, you will already be playing 25 NL, 50 NL. This is my bankroll strategy advice for you guys whose goal is to improve as fast as possible. Don't spend too much money in the micro stakes because you aren't improving. Do everything you can to improve. There are many cases of people messaging me half a year ago saying their bankroll is about 500 and now it still is 500 and they just didn't improve because they play micro stakes without improving. It is different to the guy who already beats 25 NL or 10 NL in this case comfortably and for some reason had to withdraw money and therefore their bankroll on the side isn't enough. If you beat 10 NL comfortably, then you can make sure to move up as fast as possible. If possible, take a shot because if you know you beat the higher stake, then shot taking makes sense. Shot taking makes sense if you know you have plus EV even at the higher stake. If you aren't sure about it, in my opinion, invest in improving. And the good news is at these stakes you find out relatively quickly whether you beat them or not. And if you beat them comfortably, you're expected to make 50, 60, 70 buy-ins in a month. So you don't need to desperate. Never desperate. If you beat a stake, the money will come naturally and you'll be able to move up quickly. It's not a matter of years, you know. It's a month or two, you'll have enough to move up a stake. And now let's talk about the person who already has made this experience, the low stake grinder. At many countries with 25 NL, 50 NL, you can already start considering turning professional, or at least to have poker as a very profitable side income. At these dates and at this stage of your career, you probably start playing more sites. So you need to divide, divide your bankroll across many sites. If you want to be as profitable as possible, maybe 25, 50 NL not, but by latest 100 NL sticking to one side only doesn't often make sense. So I would advise you to have a comfortable bankroll so you can, you know, have money at several stacks to, to find the best tables always. The 100 and buying rule I personally like, divide them across your sites, maybe three sites or something, 30 buy-ins at each stake, 40 buy-ins at each side, sorry, and move down if you lose half of it. So you effectively have 50 buy-ins to lose, which is unlikely to happen if you know you beat the stake. If you have a very high win rate and for some reason are still playing 25, 50 and now with a very high win rate, of course you reduce that number you can have. If you only have 50 binds, you choose two sides only, you can move up quickly. But as a general rule, unless you crush a stake, I personally like the 100 bind rule. The big question here is, are you already depending on the poker income for your life? If so, having a slightly larger bankroll has the benefit of being able to have a steady income. So I, for example, I take away from the sides every month the same amount. This amount can be adjusted, obviously. If in six months I, I start crushing and moving up even more, I can raise the money. Or if I start for some reason being in a downswing, I can at some point decrease the money. But if you have a 100 buying strategy or even slightly more, you divide it by many sides no matter the month, whether you lose or win, you take away your money as your income. And it also has the benefit of 
if one day there's a problem with one side, if you divide your money evenly across several sides, then there's no problem if, I mean, it's not a disaster if something happens to one side compared to if you stick to one side only. But it's player profile again and the type of person. Most important question, how much is your win rate? If you have a high win rate, then if you're prepared to maybe have to move down for the chance of moving up and being to the stake you belong to quickly, take your shot aggressively. Take a five buying shot, see what happens. Take a 10 buying shot and see what happens. This is up to you to decide. But if you don't have a high win rate, if you have a low win rate, there's no point in shot taking aggressively. And also there's no point in playing a stake with 50 binds, 40 binds. If you have a low win rate, you're gambling because you will have to move up, down quite often. And if for some reason you do make money at these stakes, you're still stuck to the stake. You can't move up again because you don't have the skills for it. So understanding the game level and also here, investing to improve is important. The more you improve, the quicker you move up in stakes, not the more aggressive you shot take. All of this that I said about the low stakes grinder in a way applies to the mid stakes grinder. So I'm dividing between low stakes and high stakes and then the guy who's playing 200 NL, even if it's not technically high stakes, I'll, I can include him to high stakes and then 100 low stakes. But I mean, it's a fine margin. It's not like one guy has one strategy, the other guy has a completely different strategy because of the stakes they play. Consider this if you already are a professional and you pay taxes, for example. In some countries, you can withdraw to your bank and deposit again. You don't pay taxes. That's no problem. You can deposit and withdraw as much as possible. On other countries already, once the money reaches your bank account, you need to pay a tax. So it makes more sense to have a more comfortable bankroll on the sides because then if you, you don't need to deposit again money that you pay tax on already to then withdraw the same money, you end up paying more taxes. So in countries where you pay taxes, once the money reaches your bank account, I would keep the money with a high bank rule across the poker sites and the wallets. So let's say you do this already, your money is evenly spread across the sites, the wallets and the, the crypto wallets, and you just wonder what stakes you can play. At these stakes, you already know what you're doing. You know your win rates. The higher your win rate, the less binds you need. I personally like to not see poker as gambling in a way that I don't want downswings to make me move down. So I want something like 200 binds for a stake, but this is personality. You can have a different approach and obviously be more aggressive. And this is especially true for high stakes grinders because there are some stakes at the no splits, which I don't play 10 K and L games don't run as much. So unless you rag battle, you will have to deal with variance. You don't play enough hands that even if you are winning at these stakes, it is possible that you lose because there's just not enough games to being able to recover from a downswing, for example. So it is up to you to decide whether you like high risks opportunity to make even more and are able to live with the money you lose or not. Everyone has a different style there, but I personally think most people, it affects the way they play, even a slightly bit, but it affects the way they play if they play with so-called scared money. So if you play high stakes, you know, take the opportunity, maybe, maybe don't. But if you play lower stakes, I advise you not to play with money. You are afraid to lose. To end this video, I hope I could at least make you think about your current strategy, tell you the particularities of becoming a pro that you need to, you know, spread your money across different sides. It also just sucks if you play with too thin of a bankroll and then you obviously at one side you lose the money then from the other side you want money you need to always withdraw deposit again to the other side etc i find this quite annoying i don't like to every few days have to think about those things so even for this a higher bankroll strategy is a better advice obviously the tax questions if you play lower stakes micro stakes you're starting you have the advantage of being able to play one side only as most of the sides will be profitable and have good games. What I hope is that this video won't make you go back to the bankroll management search on Google or uh, similar search engines just to follow a chart. That's not the way it works. 
the way it works is maybe go to a variance calculator like I used in a different video of mine look what the minimum is you need to not go broke for the win rate you have but most importantly is try to find out how much your actual win rate is which is not easy and try to do everything you can to improve the faster you improve the faster you will move up in stakes that is key there's just no way around it if you don't improve there's no point in short taking as you'll eventually have to move down again hope you enjoyed today's topic please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting any questions about this video any other video poker in general please feel free to contact me on discord email or the instagram i left here in the youtube description any questions about my coaching i also through them i'll get back to you i promise and see you in the next video